Bueno, to kick off today's episode, we have a special surprise. We welcome decorated broadcast journalists and co-hosts of the Five of Us podcast. Bueno. Collectively, with more than 125 years of work experience, Roma Tari, Janine Ramirez, Kristen Shaughnessy, Amanda Farinacci, and Vivian Lee have seen and heard it all. <laughs> Through the truths you wish someone had told you at the beginning of your career, discussing topics such as sexism, wage inequality, racism, and ageism, the Five of Us podcast gives the unfiltered reality of the workplace to help guide successful careers and life balance by offering actionable strategies. Joining us now to share more, we welcome the Five of Us co-hosts, Roma Tori, Janine Ramirez, Kristen Shaughnessy, Amanda Farinacci, and Vivian Lee. Yay! <laughs> thank you for being here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you for basically moving us forward as women into the next chapter. Now, we all met, um, I want to say, in 2020, in person, that is, right? Mm -hmm. Because, honestly, I... And I'm, I'm in awe, I'm a little lost for words right now because <laughs> I'm actually at the table with the women that I basically watched for very many years on New York One. And um, in 2020, we did the Women's March and I was the host and you guys were mm -hmm. the keynote speakers and you happened to be going through uh, like a lawsuit, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to be delicate and making sure I'm not saying anything wrong here, but I know that part of the the whole issue was that uh, you were dealing with uh, discrimination and and marginalization and ageism, and um, and in 2020 you spoke to that mm -hmm. publicly in front of thousands of women, and so here we are. In Times Square. <laughs> And Times oh, Square. Oh, by, by, uh, by Columbus Central, Circle, Central, right? Columbus right. Circle, right. Yeah. Columbus Circle, we marched through Times Square. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. And so here we are years later, and now you've established your own podcast because you all went through this together, mm. and now you're speaking against it. So I, I, I have certain questions written here, but I, I want you to open up as to how uh, this was even inspired, right? Like mm -hmm. the, the podcast itself. Like what, is it something that you guys in relation to on a personal level or it, was it just based on working together? Mm. It was personal obviously because we're friends. Right. Mm -hmm. When we left uh, our jobs on the very same day, uh, we realized we had a lot in common. We wanted to speak the truth about life in the workplace and we had heard from not just hundreds thousands of women from and not just from the united states we heard from women across the country across the, the world. world right mm -hmm. uh, throughout i mean they like brazil and australia etc cetera, etc cetera. and they were all complaining about similar stories that involved us and so we realized their their strength in numbers we were able to tell our story but at the same time we were able to allow other women to tell us their stories and we discovered that uh, the workplace is is a war zone for some women and it can turn toxic for many people you know in in one of our podcasts i, I saw there there was a there was a, a statistic that really caught my eye it was a gallup poll and it said of all the people that they had questioned in this poll, 60% said they were emotionally disengaged from their jobs. Mm. More than half of the country's workforce is disengaged from their jobs, and then they said a whole 19% are miserable. Now, when it comes to women, I would say that number is a lot higher because I think women have a much harder time navigating the perils and pitfalls of the workplace. You know, there's uh, discrimination. And then in the middle of all this, you know, one of our most successful uh, episodes was on menopause. And, me and we kind of take credit for this, but menopause was, is that silent thing that nobody talks about. The women, uh, I mean, all women are going to go through it at one way or another at some right. point in their lives. And yet nobody wants to talk about it because it involves women. And there's very little health care that is directed specifically toward women when it, it comes to uh, menopause. It's, it's, it's regarded as a disability. So these are all things that we decided needed 
to be hashed out and we could talk about them based on our own personal experiences but I think what makes us rather unique in our podcast is that we do a lot of research. We really work hard. I mean, we don't just speak for ourselves. Right. You know, we speak for you know, the science, the truth, the, right. you know, the facts. Yeah, and, and I, I, I heard of a few of them, and <laughs> um, and I, I get it, right? Because the especially the menopause episode that you were referencing <laughs> with regards to uh, being a woman and having to manage both uh, your professional life and your Personal and your hot life. flashes. Right. And the hot <laughs> flashes on top of everything else, right? Yeah. So um, I, I know you spoke to uh, the messy middle in, oh, yeah. in that episode. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. The, the, the being like the filling inside of a sandwich. Right. So, you know, you've, you've heard of uh, men going through a midlife crisis. It usually afflicts men, right? But there is a, a psychologist who coined a term and she called it the midlife collision that afflicts women mostly. And it has to do with the fact that so many women in middle age have to confront multiple crises and transitions and challenges at the same time. Um, and they involve um, maybe elderly parents need uh, health care, children maybe off to college or they have problems in school. Career can be an issue because as we know when women age, um, they're, they're not treated as well as, as as they should, and they're not treated comparably with, with the men in, in their workplace. So all of these things converge on women at almost at the exact same time, and it can be a deal breaker for women in the workplace, right. and oftentimes it forces them to take a pause. And you know what happens when, when you walk away from a job Well, I mean, 40s, after all, it is called menopause. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it should be, right. And it yeah. should be woman a pause. Right. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. No, 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 it, and, and it's all valid because it's being, it's, like you're in the center being pulled in both directions. Yeah, we're the caregivers right. and we're the ones who are burdened with all of those responsibilities at the same time. Right. And so that's why it's called the midlife collision and it's something that the workplace needs to address um, and they don't, unfortunately. And I just want to mention to our viewers, that's in episode 42, if mm -hmm. you want to learn more <laughs> on that. And so we're going to jump to Janine. Janine, um, you know, let's talk to the importance of respect. I appreciated that episode as well. I, I respect in being the number one motivator in the workplace. And, and, and just out of curiosity, how do you pick your topics, all of you? <laughs> Well, sometimes it's based on current events, right? Mm -hmm. um, when the women's soccer players weren't getting their due, <laughs> we're like, oh, that's a topic for us. We need to talk about that. <laughs> um, well, you know, menopause, obviously, we, there's a topic that we, we spoke about. So um, we, we look at what's, what's in the news also based on experiences. And um, as far as respect is concerned, you know, right now I'm working in a consulting capacity and um, my le team leader, she's great she is a great boss she kind of says you guys are the experts what do you have i'm coming to you give me your ideas um you're the pros this is your skill set and you know it's an open dialogue but we've all had bad bosses right right so and and so in a bad boss situation you have somebody who's micromanaging you have somebody who has set uh, unrealistic expectations you have somebody who is talking badly about you, and you may not even know it, right. um, but they talk badly about other employees in front of you, so clearly your, your name is gonna come up in one of those bad conversations <laughs> as well. So um, I think for respect, uh, they say that people don't leave bad, you know, they leave bad bosses, right? Right. They don't, like, it's not really, sometimes it's not a matter of the money, sometimes it's not a matter of the schedule, sometimes it's a matter of just leaving a bad boss because it be creates a toxic situation right. for you. and. I think number one is you need to be aware. Right, right. right? Because it becomes a reflection of yourself right, as well. Right. In your in what you're subjecting yourself on a, to on a daily basis. Right. And then you know you start to question like you know where, where where's the joy in life, right? And that's what we opened up with is just finding that balance in life and understanding that yeah okay we're doing a job but uh, at what expense? At yeah. what expense? And during the pandemic, we talked about burnout. Right. And that leads to burnout quicker than right. any other thing. Yeah, and so Kristen, I want to ask you about households, right? <laughs> I want to ask you about just the, because I, 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 you made a point in this episode where we were talking about, um, what we were talking about, where you guys were talking about. You were with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was there listening. <laughs> working households and sharing household responsibilities and especially if one is the dominant breadwinner right like mm -hmm. does that mean that they're entitled to less responsibilities absolutely not and I would say 
the majority of us were the primary breadwinners. So right. I think we can speak from that angle too. No, I mean, for so long there were so many women who stayed home. Now the statistics are like 40 to 60 percent of women are the primary breadwinners so they deserve a little help at home but also if the guy is staying home they deserve help too so it's it's a two-way street i just talk we say the brains are different a little bit like i point it's out to my differently yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The guys um, are hard <laughs> they don't do that stuff <laughs> i always give big example my husband who i just like stuff was not getting picked up and so i put him zigzag on the stairs and he went around it was like a maze <laughs> And I said, did you see what you just did? And he said, well, why didn't you just tell me I'd pick it up? I just don't see it. Their oh, brains think Oh, my gosh, that's hilarious. He was, like, avoiding it. Yeah, and he would do anything I asked. But you have, Janine talks about when, yeah. you know, Frankie, your husband, wants yeah, to, she wants him to go grocery shopping. And she's like, don't ask me what to get. Look in the refrigerator and figure right. out what we need, yeah, you know? What, what do I need to buy? Well, here's yeah. what I would do if I were you. <laughs> I would open the refrigerator <laughs> and I would look to take stock of what needs and then write it down. Yeah. That's what I would do. So in essence, what I'm hearing here is this is a podcast that men should be listening to. We do have a lot of male that listeners i think and you know sometimes they think we bash them a little too much but it's just honestly it's, it's we have all great husbands we really do and but it is kind of opening eyes and saying this is 2024 you know it's it's not just taking out the garbage anymore because oh we're all busy come on so. and then you're the the primary breadwinner too right yeah. come on I, I mean to give you an example on top of it all i remember sitting out on our block and um there were four guys in me, and they were the primary breadwinners, and they were, like, complaining about their jobs. Meanwhile, their wives were all inside, and I'm like, okay, I'm doing both because my husband was away. I was like, that job is so much harder, what the women are doing, than what the men are doing mm -hmm. going to work. And mm -hmm. we had a challenging job, but trying to maintain a household is, is hard. I know. We're organic multitaskers. Yes, yes. I That's get the difference. It. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can relate. I'm in the same boat. Uh, Amanda, Amanda, let's talk about motherhood, mm -hmm. right? I'm in that boat, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, your, your children are older now, right? Uh, ten and eight. Ten and eight, but they're yeah. still on the young side, yeah. right? And, I, and you spoke to uh, the difference between motherhood on social media <laughs> versus motherhood in real life yeah. and the impact that that may have on one's mental health. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's one. So to Janine's point, like so much of what we talk about is lived experience, right? And so like at the exact time in my life, I'm I'm obviously on social. I'm a social media user. Uh, my children, you know, there's a whole other conversation we've had about how much use we provide to our children, how much access we give them to social media. But as parents, there's so much pressure to. Um, have your kids, you know, do all the activities, get them to all the places, have all the play dates, be present for school events, have a working career, <laughs> cook a nice dinner, have fun snacks, go on nice vacation. It's so much that it's, it's potentially, uh, dra it weighs you down. It really weighs you down. And so one of, uh, it's something that I have personally experienced in which, you know, I open my phone, I look on Instagram and I see some twit posting some whatever and I and I'm like oh my god I didn't do I didn't do and this posing for yeah, and, and I'm like and then I, I, I yeah. yeah and I'm looking around my house where my dinner is like barely on the table exactly. I'm like I, you know I've got laundry in nine million places my children are not in bed when they're supposed to be I'm trying to manage my job I'm answering phone calls the dog needs to be fed and I'm like what am I doing wrong here but guess what I'm not doing anything wrong it's it's the flip side of that and it is mentally damaging I think and we've talked about this a lot it it does take an effect because guess what the next day after I see a post of Miss Perfect on Instagram I'm driving to work and I'm thinking oh my god I wish I could do this a little better guess what though we're all doing the best we can and I and I think there needs to be more of that and so like what I wind up finding is what I follow on Instagram are people who sound more like me which right. is like this is hard we're getting through it it really doesn't matter what it looks like it's all based on love and let's just do the best we can right and that's really where it lands and, but yeah no and, and thank you because uh, we're offering bite sizes of what they offer on their podcast, right? Mm -hmm. I'm giving them a little taste of different episodes and yeah. the topics that you yeah. you discuss. And and what I really appreciated about you is the fact that you're uh, a meditator, you're a disciplined meditator, and and that loans itself to the mental health yes. uh, wellness aspect. Yes. And and also, you know, monitoring how much time you spend on social yeah. media. I do think your mental, your brain, and your and your mind is your strongest muscle. I'm a I'm a Big, big, big believer in that. If your mind is not right, everything else is yeah. off. And whatever you can do for me is, I'm, I'm like operating in like an orbit of peace is where I'm trying to live. <laughs> my life is very chaotic, but I need the bubble of just give me a minute and I'll get myself together and then we can proceed. As and I should. think that's as the most important. Should. As yeah. we all should, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That bubble. 
within limitations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So um, we're going to close with you, Vivian. Uh, and I wanted to mention, you know, that BronxNet is an intern-based institution. And as uh, we head into the summer, I, I wanted to ask uh, if you could speak to the importance of internship and its value. Um, and is it really about subjecting yourself to certain environments? Uh, yes and no. I think it's really important to focus yourself. And we had an episode where we talked about how these days a lot of interns that we may have come across on our jobs or in the past, um, a lot of the time it's about them, like what they want to get out of it. And that's all well and good. But no matter where you choose to go, there's got to be some kernel of interest, number one, that draws you to work at that place. Because there may be payment, there may not. I think all of us had experience going through internships where we weren't paid on a daily basis, but we were at the, the internship program for weeks at a time. Um, we've talked about how, in a lot of cases, you have to kind of pull yourself out of it and try to relinquish, you know, the fact that you don't know everything that's right. happening in that environment. So try to look to all the people who are around you, say yes. I think that's something that Amanda was really advocating in our episode where we were talking about this, where if you're offered to do something, like take the initiative and just like say yes no matter what it is, like within reason, but understand that your enthusiasm is going to have a lot to do with how much you glean from that whole experience. Mm -hmm. And really that episode was one of many where we talked about what we would tell our 20 year old selves <laughs> if we had the opportunity to go back in time and little things like understanding kindness is very different from niceness at work what's the difference uh, well kindness is like it's a whole person attitude you don't expect anything in return you are humanizing everyone around you I mean this world especially with social media and we've talked about this too is all about what your extrinsic value is right what are you getting out of it getting out of it getting out of it whereas kindness especially if you employ it in your workplace will come back to you in spades will make people respect you even more and will also make them want to do stuff for you and with you give you opportunity um, give you the benefit of the doubt and it also helps to soften the edges of the daily workload that people go through no matter where you are I mean we worked in t a television newsroom and in other newsrooms too where we felt like the deadline of the job really made for nastiness it al almost gave people permission to right. be nasty yeah. but what really would have made the difference and did in all of our cases was those one or two people who knew how to talk to you like a person understood that saying sorry at the right time matters saying thank you at the right time matters it's not performative you don't just like hand over checks or money you know when people are having birthday parties or baby showers or whatever that's all well and good and you should do that but there are also those moments where you need to take ownership of when you did something wrong and when somebody else did something wrong approach them about what the offense meant to you and be nice and kind about it right, right? so right. I think those lessons like looking back in time all of us being middle-aged we would love to tell our 20 year old selves that it's not just about you right. in your 20s. There is a whole universe of people that you can also learn from and benefit from. And you need to be open to that and maybe like be quiet and listen. Mm -hmm. Just listen mm -hmm. more than you would talk. I think the world needs to take that advice right now <laughs> is for all of us to listen and to really amplify the humanity that exists within each and every one of us. Totally. Yes. And so thank you for closing us with that. But I want, uh, I want you all to just think of one word that comes to mind right now that would uh, leave our viewers inspired. Who would like to go first? Well, I'd like to say you are kind. <laughs> mm -hmm. You are kind. You're a kind-hearted person. You're a warm person. Mm -hmm. And everybody feels that around you. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Thank you, Janine. <laughs> we agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. exude it. Yeah. <laughs> you Thank do. you. You do. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I would say keep going. That's what I would say. <laughs> Take right? action. The, yeah. Take I action. think, like, you yeah. know, maybe do the thing that you thought you couldn't do, even when you feel like it. And it could just be if, if kindness is your thing, keep going with that. Yeah. Or if you have a, you know, greater goal or whatever, keep going it's and not to be afraid right I yeah think that's yeah but I think like yeah. two little two little words remind you every well, day I, I, don't, I, don't, I have a little a few more words but mine would be don't let anyone hijack your self-worth you know we've we've been through the mill with people telling you you can can't cannot do this or you don't look good or you are not good at anything and 
look where we are today, you know, and we're as happy as clams, right? <laughs> we did and it we're our all way. exuding well, it. Well, we did it our way. Yes, yeah. that's the best way. Yeah. Frank, yeah. Sinatra, Frank Sinatra style. <laughs> I did it my way. There you go. I'm you might get you. a little song in there. <laughs> Thank you all for being here with us today. Everyone, Janine Ramirez, Roma Tori, Kristen Shaughnessy, Amanda Farinacci, and Vivian Lee, once again, broadcast journalist and co-host of the Five of Us podcast. Once again, the Five of Us podcast is available on Apple, Amazon, and Spotify, and it also airs on community media of Staten Island. And for more information, you can check them out on Instagram at the Five of Us podcast. All right, stay tuned. There's more open when we return.